close your eyes and take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing in your body. Focus your attention there. And then the next question is, is it comfortable? If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. You can try shorter or even deeper or longer, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to get to know what the body needs right now in terms of the breath. Because the body can go without food for a couple of days, can go out water for a while, but it can't go without breathing. This is your most necessary food for the mind. It only stands to reason this process that keeps the body alive. If it feels good, it's going to be good for the body. If it doesn't feel good, it's going to be bad for you. So give it some attention. Pay attention to things that are really close to you. You've got your body, you've got your mind. You, these are the things you have to be responsible for. We learn so much about the world far, far away. Especially now everybody has a screen. You can get information from anywhere in the world right now. But that's distracting your attention from the areas where you're most responsible. What you do with your body, what you do with your mind. Because you're not just on the receiving end of things. The mind goes out looking for things. Sometimes it goes out looking for trouble. Greed takes over and it goes out looking for something to be greedy about. Anger comes over, overcomes you and you go out looking for something to be angry about. Same with delusion, same with fear, jealousy. All these emotions can take over and push you out. And we're not paying attention to what's going on inside the mind, we're paying attention to what's outside. So we're missing the real story. So when we come to meditate, we're reestablishing our attention right here, where it really matters. So we can see if troublemakers are going out through their eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. We can cut them off. Part of the reason they go out is because they're hungry. So you give the mind a sense of well-being with the breath right now, and they won't be so hungry. This way, as you take more responsibility for your actions, you find that the world around you becomes a better place. It's when we're not responsible for our actions. We, we tend to go out and try to straighten other people out, tell them what to do. But then our own actions leave a lot to be desired. And how can our words have any, any real weight? As John Sowet used to like to say, each of us has only one person we're really responsible for. That's ourselves. There's only one person that we can really depend on. As the Buddha says, atta hi no nato. The self has to be its own mainstay, because nobody else can be your mainstay for you. And if you can't rely on yourself, if you tell yourself to do one thing and the mind does something else, then where are you going to have any mainstay, any protection at all? So you've got to bring the mind under control. But do it in a way that it finds that it's good to be in control and under control. That's where we work with the breath. So the present moment is a good place to stay. This is where you get to watch things clearly. Because our life, lives are shaped by what? They're shaped by our intentions. And where do our intentions come from? They come from the mind. And they're happening right here. You can't go back and change your old intentions. But you can work on your new ones right now. So we stay with the breath, give the mind a good foundation, a sense of well-being. So it's at the right place, it's well-fed, and it's clear about what its responsibilities are. That's when you can say that you can really trust yourself. You can depend on yourself. You've got a refuge inside. So make sure you meditate every day. We wash our faces every day. We brush our teeth every day. But the mind is more important than your face. The mind is important than your teeth. So make sure you t look after it every day, too.